Hello everyone, this is Stuart Rose with Dewey's Harper, Kansas. Today we're going to show you the final assembly and setup of your new S3. Uh, this machine may have just rolled in your driveway and you've unloaded off a semi and with that there's going to be some uh, assembly and setup and also some uh, final adjustments to get the amount of hay that you're wanting to feed. And so uh, we're going to run through that today whether you're specifically a dealer or an end user. And to start off with, we're going to move to the back of the machine and we'll, we'll uh, start this assembly. Generally speaking, when a machine is delivered off the semi for the first time, uh, the load arm will actually be banded inside the table. Now this particular machine has been already assembled for the, the rest of the procedures, but I thought I would at least discuss that with you a bit. So once the semi, uh, the, the semi leaves, the machine set down on the ground, you're going to find that the parts to the, the uh, arm are going to be disassembled, laid in the table, and banded together. First step would be to cut those bands, remove those pieces, and lay them out. I actually prefer to use a grass area if I can, because uh, when we're using the grass, uh, I'm not worried about scratching anything in particular and I can lay the parts out them and, and slide them around without uh, any degradation of the paint. One of the first things that you'll find then is uh, this portion of the load arm where it attaches to the frame. There are three tabs that come off of the frame. There'll be one at the very back, one just ahead of that, and then one clear at the front of the machine. There are three half inch bolts for each of the tabs. Uh, those um, mounting tabs then, the, the arm is, will actually be to the back side of the, uh, of the tabs on the frame itself. Then you can uh, attach the hydraulic cylinder and uh, put that pin in. The hydraulic cylinder will be in place uh, on the back side of the machine. It, it'll be attached, yet uh, from there you'll, uh, it'll be wired up. You'll take the wire loose and put the pin in for the hydraulic cylinder. Now that the pin's in place uh, attaching the hydraulic cylinder to the arm itself, we're going to uh, attach what would be the outside of that arm. And of course in this uh, example it's already attached, but this would be a time when I would tell you to actually put the arm uh, to the ground. This sleeve just slides over this inner sheath and then there's a pin here on the side and that's what's going to give you your adjustment for uh, bale size. Now we're going to move up to the front of the machine and we're going to attach the PTO shaft. First thing we'll do will be remove the safety shield that covers the drive belt. There are two clips on top of the machine. Let's we'll simply remove those. Set them aside. There's a rubber strap underneath the machine, right, kind of just right above the tongue. We'll remove that. There's another one on the side of the machine. I'll expose the bottom of the PTO shaft once it's in place. From here, we'll just simply pick up, set it aside. I want to talk just a minute about this, the pedestal that's placed right on the very front of the tongue and hits here just kind of as, as, a, as a support for the PTO shaft. It simply just lifts up, you can repin it in place. And here when we get ready to put the PTO shaft on, we'll simply just put the, the front heavy weight on the end of the, uh, on the pedestal as we uh, attach the shaft. You'll see also on the side of the pedestal there's actually some uh, knockouts here that are uh, accessible for the hydraulic hoses to be able to support them. You'll notice then that there's two different uh, end styles. The end that specifically goes on the uh, slicer itself, you'll find that it's a round, uh, smooth bore, one inch shaft with a keyway. This is what will attach specifically to the shaft on the machine. The other end is going to be the uh, splined uh, 540 uh, connection. So, I'm simply just going to put the other end of the uh, shaft just in the pedestal to help myself get kind of lined up here, actually help hold the weight. I've got the machine turned so where the keyway 
is specifically right square up, straight. I'm gonna line it up and just simply slide it on. Now that we have the PTO shaft in place, we'll install the safety set screws that go on the side of the shaft and these will actually help hold the keyway as well as the shaft in place. Now then we have the set screws tight that hold the PTO shaft to the shaft of the machine. We'll set the wrenches aside. Now we're going to look at the hydraulics specifically. Uh, the hydraulic hoses will be zip tied back to the frame and to the tongue. We're going to cut those zip ties, leave them aside, and you'll notice that there are four hoses. Two of them will be three-eighths, two of them will be half-inch. The half-inch hoses specifically run the table the 3 8 hoses will run that lift arm. So, for now we're going to just uh, be concerned with uh, hooking up the load arm and that's actually what we're going to use to be able to move the table. So I'm going to set the half inch hoses aside. We're just going to put them into the pedestal here on the front of the machine. Again today we're using the Dewey's bail bed to provide that hydraulic power for running the arms. And we'll simply just stamp them in. That'll provide us the fluid that we need to be able to uh, move that table here directly. Well, we're going to demonstrate attaching what will be the kicker bar. So we already have the uh, load arm installed. We're going to set the load arm to the ground and this will make space available so that we can get in and take the kicker bar from the table and be able to install it uh, in its place. So we have our hydraulic connection made using the half inch hose, I'm sorry, three eighths hose. I'm going to go ahead and set that arm down to the ground. Then we have our kicker bar that's detached in the table. We're going to take it loose, turn it upside down and backwards. We'll simply make the motions to be able to put it in place. There'll be two pins, one inch pins. You simply install those pins, put the Carter keys in, and uh, then your, your kicker bar. The rest of your load assembly is complete. Now that we have the kicker bar installed and we're still at the back of the machine, we're going to talk about uh, taking the bolts out that allow us to actually be able to move that table over. So you'll find in the center of the back of the machine and the center of the front of the machine, there's one half inch bolt double nutted with a, with a jam nut and that's holding them in place. So at this point in time, we're going to take one out of the back and the front also. Now we're actually ready to move the table over so that we can put it into feed position. This will give you another 18 inches of, uh, of clearance on the right hand side of the machine to be able to, to clear a bunk. This is actually fairly easy. What I use is just a, sim a block of wood. This is a roughly 24 inches long and I'll just simply raise that load arm up I'm going to catch the lip of this outer sleeve, align it with just the edge of the table here on the channel iron, and we're start to, to just start to move that table over. Now that we have the bolt holes aligned after sliding the table over, we'll reinstall the half inch bolts, both front and back. So now we've moved back to the front of the machine. We've lowered the uh, lift arm down just for the sake of the video so the cameras can see clear table uh, view and we'll see what the flow control does as it relates to, uh, uh, as it relates to the speed. So the flow control is placed right here directly on the front corner of the machine. It's numbered between one and 10. I will tell you that the real operating range is mostly about uh, two and a half up to about seven. Uh, below two and a half, the machine actually can stall out and above seven really doesn't make a tremendous amount of difference. 
So I'll show you what that looks like. Right now it's set on about three and we'll go in the forward position. This would actually be the direction in which you'd be feeding. If I loosen that flow control and simply just turn it up a bunch, you'll see we're starting to gain speed. Now our tractor would be running roughly 15 to 1800 RPM more than what our hydraulic capacity is uh, at this point in time. So we actually would probably be getting more actual speed than what you see in this particular video with the flow control now set at seven. So I'll go back down to two and a half. For those of you, you that are, will be doing rebaling at about two and a half is gonna be a fairly a typical uh, table speed setting uh, for that application. We're feeding the pasture, you know, somewhere maybe in that four to five range is maybe what you're wanting to do, depending on how far you're wanting to go to be able to dispense that hay. Bunk feeding may be somewhere closer to around four. So now we're going to talk about the primary adjustment of the machine, which that's actually going to be that gate opening that allows for that appropriate uh, hay disbursement that you're looking for. Most oftentimes, if you're setting this machine up for rebaling, the standard three inches as it's set from the factory is going to be sufficient for what you're looking for. If we're talking about feeding in a bunk, primarily I imagine that'll work. If we're wanting to uh, put out large windrows in a pasture scenario, you may want to raise it a little bit. That gate opening is set at three inches. It goes clear up to roughly seven inches, which depending on your ground speed, the speed of the table, and then this table height, the amount of the hay that's dispersed in a given distance is pretty invariable. So I wanna show you a little bit about how actually you can change this gate setting. There are bolt holes here on the front of the machine. There are two here. There's an adjuster rod that's actually right here in the front. It's just an all thread, half inch all thread. There happens to be another one on the rear of the machine and two more bolts on the back. So once these are loose, all we'll do is loosen the jam nut. We can turn this all thread up or down to be able to, uh, to raise or lower that height. I want you, as you're uh, going through this application, I want you to be very particular as to keep track of that height with a measure tape from front to back and so that you'll be even and be sure and don't get the machine in a bind. This will allow you to, uh, to put out a, very, uh, a wide variety of hay in a windrow or there again in a, um, in a fence bunk. Now that we've moved the table over that 18 inches, you'll be running right down your fence line uh, bunk being able to disperse directly into those and give you that application that you're looking for. Last in our steps before we're actually ready to go feed would be uh, checking our belt tension and putting the, the shield back on. So if we've raised the table height, that's actually going to change the tension on the drive belt that runs the Schumacher drive. So essentially all you're gonna to have to do is uh, just raise or lower this um, pulley to be able to tighten that tension back that's what we're looking for. Simply put your wrench back on, tighten it back down. Now we'll be ready to put that uh, safety shield back in its place. You're ready to go to the field. So we're just about ready to go feed. We have the lift arm on, we've got the table moved over, we have our table height set the way we wanted it to. We've put the uh, safety shield back on the front of the machine. Earlier we talked about the punch out here on the front of the machine and that was relating to whether you had a PTO like this or in a hydraulic machine. With that hydraulic machine you actually could leave that punch out in place. But I wanted to show you this so now that we have the PTO shaft on, the shield back in place, kind of what that looks like. So we were talking about PTO and or hydraulic and the requirements uh, for horsepower and such to run it on all 
hydraulic machine, I would like to see about 17 gallon of flow at the tip. And then on, uh, so that would get you, say your medium so size horsepower tractors and up, or say the newer tractors uh, nowadays will have that kind of flow. Uh, if your tractor has a flow control, uh, I would tell you to uh, set the flow control at about half, especially if your tractor is capable of, say, putting out 25, 30 gallon of flow per minute. So set the flow control, go ahead and engage it, make sure you're not bypassing on the bottom end or the top end, and that way uh, we'll, uh, we'll get that adjustment made. The versatility of this machine shines for those smaller or older tractors, and that's where we can use this PTO shaft. Uh, so that's going to give us the opportunity to, uh, to be able to, say, run on a 50 horsepower tractor, maybe an older tractor uh, with uh, less hydraulic capabilities, and uh, still be able to, to make a uh, full-on feeding unit out of that. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. If there's something else that we can help you with as it relates to assembly of this machine or just in that overall setup to get you back out to the field, we, uh, we'd like to hear from you. Call us at Harper Industries, 800-835-1042. Thank you.